Shaw Sports Presentation. Oh my goodness, John Shaw! He could not, would not be stopped. The 2019 Sir John Jackson Cup Final, it's a generational clash. Hello everyone, I'm Arturo, here with the Executive Director of the Vancouver Island Soccer League, Vince Greco. Vince, it's West Castle and Bays, a tale of two generations. It really is. You have the, uh, the younger generation versus the older, more experienced generation. Uh, it should be a battle. West Castle, of course, they play soccer all year round in their academy out in West Hills. Vince, let's talk about the road to get here. Not as rough for West Castle, but it still took a lot to get here. You know what, uh, every game on the way to the final is obviously a tough one. Uh, when you're a top team, everyone's looking to really come out and get you and, and have that upset. So West Castle were definitely challenged. Uh, but on the other side of the draw, the side that Bays came through, they had to beat uh, the Garrison Cup Division One winners, Cowichan, and that game in itself was a battle. So uh, definitely the bottom side of the draw was had a lot more of the higher seated teams. So uh, yeah, correct on both counts. We even saw in the semifinal a rematch of last year's Jackson Cup final between Gorge and Laco, which is a decent tilt in and of itself. Bays, of course, have a history. They have won the Jackson Cup once before. What do they need to do to try and get it back this year? Vince? Well, they're really going to have to use um, the situation today, playing on grass, slowing the ball down. They don't want to obviously play into the, the younger kids' uh, speed and, uh, and, and those tactics. So uh, they'll look to slow the play down, counter when possible. Uh, and use that experience to sort of get them through that to the end championship. Bays United and West Castle, the Jackson Cup coming up next. And you can see there in their sky blue and black kit, West Castle United finished second in the Division I season. 11 wins, four losses, three draws. Good for 36 points. They're on our broadcast left. They will be attacking to the right, where we will find in their green and white kit, Bays United. They have a Jackson Cup win, that was in 2013. This season in Division One, they finished fifth. 10 wins, seven losses, one draw, good for 31 points. Both these sides, Vince, high firepower teams. Both these teams finished one and two in goals scored. 47 for West Castle, 46 for Bays. No uh, strangers to find in the back of the net here. Absolutely, you have a couple explosive players uh, on the West Castle team. Um, definitely Rookie of the Year candidate in Gote Natigny who's uh, scored a bucket full of goals, and he's, uh, he's got a little bit of that old school flair, loves to stick a tackle, uh, and loves going at defenders. So a great one there. On the other side, you have reigning uh, three-time Division I MVP uh, in Patrick uh, Nelson. You've got other standouts as well that uh, don't mind scoring, and uh, it's gonna be a battle. Looks like it. Whistle there blown by a little bit of history here, Vince. The first woman to referee a Jackson Cup final, Carly Shaw McLaren in the middle today. Absolutely, and uh, not just the, uh, well, she, she did start uh, the Jackson Cup earlier uh, in the last month, so she was the first female to get in the middle there. And like you say, the first female official to do the middle in a final as well, accompanied by uh, her the AR there as well, um, Ms. Browning, who's also uh, her first time in a final, so it's uh, yeah, definitely a little bit of good history. Strong start for both sides, high tempo. Simon Norgro will slow things down here for West Castle. And you see there what just happened, that's exactly what Bays is hoping is going to happen. West Castle is not accustomed to this grass. Um, the bounces are going to be a little bit trickier. Patrick Nelson jumped on top of that and, uh, and looked to have a, a quick go on Simon Rogo, but obviously a, a great keeper and uh, he was well up for the task. Throw in here for West Castle. And low by Walter looking forward. That's thumped clear with authority by Ryan Ashley. Ryan and Mark, the Ashley brothers, playing in this together. Both on defense, it would appear. See how well they can hold this line together. And 
That's a good ball forward, cross back to the center, and he's still in play though, not out of danger yet. Our base as Westcastle goes back. Nelson gets his cross, it's deflected out. That should be. Oh, it's still in play. That's all right, that's all right. And it's out for a throw. Patrick Nelson looking dangerous as we would expect Patrick Nelson to early. Sorry, Joshua Walter. I'm sorry. Joshua Walter with the cross there. Walter, top goal scorer for West Castle in the Jackson Cup with four goals to his name. Also has six in league play, 10 on the season is not a bad haul for Josh Walter. And he's in the runnings for the Division One MVP this year. Just had a great year with West Castle and a great leader. Trolling here's Thomas Robinson in the back line. Plays it out to his partner, Mark Cottrell. Trell and Robinson trying to hold this back line together against the fearsome Bayes onslaught, on which you would find Patrick Nelson actually as I get my tens backwards. And now chips four, there was the run, but nice header there to keep things clear. Called back though, and is down in a heap on the ground there, and a knot of bodies who couldn't quite see the number there, but we have a West Castle player down, only just briefly though, back up. No worse for wear, Keenan Colley. I'll jog that off. Good win. Good win. And it will go back out for a base throw. Long throw. Nelson trying to get him behind Cottrell. Cleared. Red pack. Stops by Cottrell. Cottrell busy early. Norgrove controls in his area. Looking for someone to roll it out to. Finds Cottrell. Just to lay it off there. Walter coming out. And that's thumped out for a throw. Deep throw here for Bays as a little bit of a high press catches West Castle. I think they were expecting that high of a press, and it's out for a throw now. Into the center it goes, headed clear. Headed back down again, thumped with authority out. Chested down. Nice ball forward. On his horse there on the run. Simon Stacy there. The top goal scorer for West Castle in league play. 10 goals in the first division. Also has a pair of Jackson Cup goals. 12 total, not a bad haul for a season. Trell will easily sniff that out. Making himself known in midfield though, Adam Ravenhill. Not a surprise to see Ravenhill right in the middle of things. That's going to fall to Nelson, who is covered immediately. Bodies in front of Nelson is probably the best strategy that West Castle can be using at this point. It seems to be so far working out all right. Simon Stacy plays that back and retreats. Josh Walter. Walter loses out to his namesake or his like number, number 10, Patrick Nelson. It's a low ball from Nelson. Not able to keep him on top of it. And Norgrove will thump that clear. Ashley, Ryan Ashley. Does well there. Challenges into the middle it goes and trying to bust his way through. 
Nowhere to go there, and it comes back to the fence. Barry goes along. Just looking for his target. Form of Donaldson, no such luck. That'll go out for a throw. Slow but sure, West Castle going up the side here as they try to deal with Bay's early pressure. Tight quarters there, but managing to break out now. Alex Michael Patrizzi. That's going to be chased down quickly by Ian Wibley. Wibley out wide, being watched by one by two, but does well to skip both challenges, does Wibley. He's got targets in the box. There's the cross. Just missing the header there was Donaldson. And unable to save the corner, although A for effort there with the slide was Simon Stacy coming back on defense. And it will be a corner for Bays here on the near side. It's a great run from Ian Wibley to open things up on the right hand side. Skipping two challenges there. Here's the corner. Right into the paws of Norgrove. Confident keeping from Simon Norgrove. Challenging right in the thick of it, made no mistake. And there's an early throw over the head. That's asking a lot on the run of Stacy. It's nice to see Norgrove back. He started out with uh, a great season. Hey, more aggressive, too, more aggressive. Oh, more. Hey. You can see there, no, no, uh, no mean feet there for Norgrove to get up. Simon being the sideline and after that with the injury, so he's just getting back in the last couple weeks. Meanwhile, over the heads of everyone, Patrick Nelson tips it back. This is Donaldson. Cuts back in, does well to shake his man into the box. It goes three West Castle defenders around, though. Nowhere to go. Knocked low and forward. This is Ravenhill. Knocked off the ball, but he does win the free kick, does Adam Ravenhill. Now, good chance here for Bays to make something happen with the free kick about 25, 30 yards out-ish. Both these guys are pretty dangerous on the ball. Patty Nelson and Alex Redpath, they're, uh, they can make the ball move, that's for sure. Three in the wall, fairly deep wall for West Castle. It will be Nelson, leaves it. Back to Nelson, ooh, a little bit of set piece trickery, but unfortunately, a little too hard on the touch there was Redpath. But he'll get thumped in regardless. Over the heads of everyone, this is Wibley. Blows a tire and out goes the ball. And the set piece trickery comes to naught. Strong header there. Cleared immediately by Cottrell. Back in by Bays, not wasting any time here. Caden Miner. Turned down, turned around a bit there. Stays with his man. Near post. A little too near there from Justin Donaldson. Hooks that well, well wide of the net. That's going to be a big key for Bays today. If Justin can get some penetration down that left hand side, he can be uh, pretty dangerous. 12 minutes in. Bays nil. West Castle nil. We're watching the 2019 Jackson Cup final on Shaw TV. Retiro along with Vince Greco. Shaw Spotlight bringing you this from Royal Athletic Park in beautiful Victoria, BC. And controlling now is Minor. Goes central. That's where Young is. Court is Sean Young. He's being watched, though. Here comes that press from Bays again. West Castle goes right up the middle. It's a lovely little ball. Turning on that is Gotenk Digny. Digny. Little chip forward. That might have been a call for hand ball there, but ball to hand is the ultimate ruling, and away we go the other way. Bays trying to win a throw there. Nothing doing for Donaldson. And now this is Stacy. Digny. Back to Stacy. Picked off. 
quick turnovers here from Bays and Westcastle. Quick transition game. Ashley here with the throw. Thumped away by Miner. Ooh. Bit of a coming together there between Eng and Stacy. Yeah, a bit of a high, high header there. No need to barge that hard into someone in the back. And hey, he went for a ride. <laughs> quite the ride. Not sure. Uh, one I would advertise openly, but <laughs> Barry, regardless, sends that one well past anybody. And Norgrove will take a short jog out to retrieve the ball. And it will be a West Castle goal kick. You'd mentioned earlier, Vince, uh, Gote and Tigny was in the running for rookie of the rookie of the year. How would you compare him to rookies of the past? You know what, he's one of the most entertaining players to watch. Um, unfortunately, there's, it's a tough group of uh, rookies this year, whereas there's a lot of good rookies. Uh, you have the set one of the backs for Bays United, Ryan Ashley, who's fresh off a uh, national championship, um, who's also in the same category. So it's going to be a difficult uh, trophy to win this year, but he's definitely uh, one of the more explosive and entertaining players to watch. Meanwhile, going the other way, making things happen here in Wibley. That's tipped forward, and here's Donaldson. Knocked over. That will be a free kick in a dangerous area here for Bays, just outside the arc above the area. Wibley and Donaldson making things happen in midfield here is Donaldson. With a cynical challenge there coming in from Ro Thomas Robinson. Something tells me that they're not going to try the same play as they did on the last free kick. I get the sense that only uh, one trickery <laughs> is going to happen per, per game here. You get one shot at that. Yeah, I see Patty hitting this one. Five in the wall for West Castle. One there to disrupt for Bays. Some targets short, but this has all the hallmarks of a Patrick Nelson bomb coming in. Thinks about it. And right footer, low, right into Norgrove. Well organized defense from West Castle. Nelson was always going to shoot that. Norgrove's kick is it's skyward. But Tigny comes up with it. Joshua Walter. Forward on the left. Closed down. Tigny holds up. Nice little ball there. Clever touch. And Cooper Berry makes no mistake in thumping that back the other way. Now Cooper's played middle of the park and even up top this year and they've dropped him back into the Cut. defensive sweeper sort of role and uh, he's fit in very well there. Nelson in a foot race there with Cottrell. Ultimately one. Norgrove and claim cleanly and we start again with Miner here on the near side. Young. That was Alec Michael Petrizzi. It back to Cottrell, and now we go long. Tigny looking for the run of Alec Michael Petrizzi. But he's closed down well. And that does deflect out and will be a corner for West Castle. Petrizzi, nice little run up the center there. Brian goes, we need to talk I know, I, I was too slow. And he's been an exciting player to watch this year as well. Uh, see here, he does get a nice little touch there, but getting past Cooper Berry, not going to happen. <laughs> be a delivery from the far side. Four targets in the top of the area, and now they charge in. It's low, defended, falls to Patrizzi. He's got a man on him, goes all the way back to Cottrell. That's intercepted, but also out for a throw. Too anxious there was Adam Ravenhill. Bobo, you can't leave this man in the middle too far. Don't leave him. There's some instruction there about making sure that the, the midfield is well patrolled there, Vince. It's uh, you've, We've already seen how lightning fast these turnovers can be. It's going to be a 
a real test of the technical abilities of both sides to have a really clean midfield possession. Yeah, absolutely. Organization, organization, followed up with a little bit of communication, all the other Asians, it's uh, it's going to be key, that's for sure. Quite the inspiration. Oh, nice. Hey, it's a two, two. Crossed right. in, falls, right behind all the West Castle attackers. Right shoulder! Trying to go for a run there was Donaldson. Ultimately closed down, over the top it goes, so that'll be out Good for a throw. Right there, Did take a touch off a base player. Miner picks out his target, he's got Tigny short. As he comes. Come on, Ops to go over to the edge of the area. Good. Right back to Miner. Switches just outside the area, he's found a target. No foul, no foul. Good does go. well, Under does Keenan Colley. Colley goes back, Walter. Young and Walter under some pressure here from Red Path. Ravenhill can't quite get that ball, but the second effort does go through. Cottrell now in a foot race. There's the cross. Two targets in the box. One Ooh. of them is Patrick Nelson, and he's on the outside. Not far wide of that post. There was a bit of net ripple, but it was... Mercifully for West Castle, the wrong side as Norgrove is happy to see that glance into the side netting. Definitely some religious goaltending there from Norgrove as he was definitely uh, praying for that thing to go wide. <laughs> Very devout people of the goalkeepers' union. <laughs> Minor and Cottrell have some trouble clearing it there, and this is instead Nelson charging down the left. Patrick Nelson. Does well to get around Robinson. Crosses the area. First time volley straight into the ground with by Ian Wibley. Ravenhill is blocked. Craig Robertson over on the right. And it's played all the way back. Mark Ashley. We're very. And now Ashley is back up on the left. Nelson, surrounded, and the shouts for man on come in. Now Ashley's pretty high up the pitch here. He's going to have to hurry back, covering for him. As away goes Gote Antigone, tries to cut inside. The ball still stays with Westcastle. Stacy Antigone cuts two, back two, inside. Antigone looking for target in the middle, but that is thumped clear. Sliding clearance with authority by Bayes. Ball in. Cottrell will get there, put it out for a throw. Another base throw. Just about of the just about in line with the top of the penalty area. As green jerseys take their place in the box. Three inside. One lurking out. It looks like they were, are going to go for a long throw here. There is a bit of space to wind one up, and there it goes. Able to get up and get a touch to it there was Wibley. But it uh, not really uh Easy job to try and control the defender all over you, and that is out for a goal kick. Norgrove has seen much more of the ball in the early stages here as we're 22, almost 23 minutes in. Nil all between West Castle and Bays. Andrew Flello on the other side. For Bays has been a more or less a spectator. As West Castle will try to get out of this pressure from Bays again. Red path. Gives away the foul there. And Milner will step up. Or Miner, excuse me. He'll leave it for Robinson. And they go long. There's plenty of targets on the right. That's where he sends it, looking for the run of Simon Stacy. Stacy does try to get there, but he does manage to bank it off of Mark Ashley. Gets the throw for Westcastle. Look out, cameraman. Oh, <laughs> someone think of the poor camera operators. 
all seems well with the operator and the camera and the players. Miner throws for Tiggy. Continue, continue. Back to Miner. He's got time to think of something. Goes inside to Tigny, fending off one challenge, but can't get past Red Path, and it's thumped along. Once again, Nelson in a real duel here. Both Robinson and Cottrell are going to be... Uh, there seems to be some uh, disagreement with that throw-in. Uh, I think Carly missed that last touch from uh, Patty as he flicked it up off himself. Everybody else in the park saw it, but... Uh, well, with the angle she had, she didn't. Unfortunately, unfortunately, there's only one referee's opinion who counts, and that's the one in the middle. Is Nelson here? Well, I can see how there there were both legs raised. And he didn't make a push on it, did Robinson? So, from the reverse angle, you can understand how that call was made. How is that not a foul? Bravo, and this time it will be a throw-in for West Castle. Some scrappy play there from the near corner. Looking for a way through this West Castle defense, which is having its having itself tested well and truly here. <laughs> Waiting for that though was Ashley. Mark Ashley. Adam Ravenhill under some pressure here loses out. Gets bailed out, but it goes straight back to Sean Young. Young continue, continue. goes up the left. This is Keenan Colley. Can't do much with it, but it does go out for a throw for West Castle. Tigney. All over the place is Gautet and Tigney. Left, right, trying to do everything he can to get himself into the play. No small amount of work rate, but meanwhile, the throw is taken quickly. Got to be quite a lot of running here to catch it. And that is well defended. Out for a corner. Solid run there, up the right. So all they could do to could West Castle to stop what would have been a juicy looking cross into the area. But in the end, it will be a corner for Bays United. All the green targets are forward. Everybody is more or less milling around the six yard box. They want this thing right in Norgrove's face. No kidding, it's tight in there, that's for sure. It goes short, uh, headed clear by Joshua Walter. Not the best corner. Coming up second ever, though. Second phase ball. Adam Ravenhill plays it out wide, but he's played his man offside. Taken quickly. No, not taken quickly. Just uh, bounced off in an odd direction. And it will be Norgrove taking the free kick after the offside call. Go green. and Stacy, your targets here. Stacy is there, flicks it on. Right back the other way goes Cooper Berry. Falls. Nelson tries to back heel it over for Donaldson. Donaldson does make a nice little spin move there and tries to sprint up for it. It's well defended though by Thomas Robinson. And that will be a goal kick as Robinson did bank it off of Donaldson in the end. Don't envy Caden Miner and Thomas Robinson. They have uh, they are gonna have their hands full of this is the side that Justin Donaldson and Patrick Nelson are favoring early on, Vince. They are gonna be tested thoroughly here. We talked about that generational divide between these two teams. It's a uh, well school is in session here for the youngsters. Absolutely, and it's a it's a whole different ball game on the grass too as well. So it um, that probably plays into Bayes' favor somewhat. As you can see there, Red Path being a little too uh, heavy a challenge there on Joshua Walter. Good. And we're in. Get it off. It's right to the chest of Cottrell. Watch you on the split. Good. Tigney. Continue. Keeps chasing after it. Red Path will get rid of it. Tries to find Donaldson. Donaldson does well to get a touch there. He's got Nelson on the left. Kid instead goes to the right. Takes a funny bounce on Wibley. He stays with it, but then gives it away as a throw. Really? 
Long ball dealt with easily by Ryan Ashley. Flicked on by Ravenhill. Falls again for Wibley. Cuts it inside for Nelson. Can't quite get there. Nelson shows short, though, but that's well defended by Joey Seo. Out on that far left side. And long it goes. It's a long run for Keenan Cauley. He still will run with it. But that is some solid, rock solid defending by Ryan Ashley. Sends the attacker flying. Hit him with. You're going to see a lot of that all game from Ryan. He is just a stud back there. You have two now. Joshua Walter. Is that right on the head of Mark Ashley? Go with him, Rag. And this, you can see the idea here, but Ashley's got him lined up and shoulder to shoulder, clean as you like. Young now. One go! And well, well offside there was Simon Stacy, who certainly had the attacking impetus, but the timing was uh, to be desired. And Andrew Flello will get a goal kick here. Nelson flicks on Donaldson. Does draw the foul off of Caden Miner. Base free kicks are coming in from this near side quite a bit here. So the they've seen something they like on the left side their left side of the pitch here, Vince. There's a been no shortage of opportunities here. I'll tell you what it is, it's Justin Donaldson and, and him pushing forward and being aggressive and going at the kids with pace. It's uh definitely part of their their plan of attack. It's the one West Castle player assigned to the wall against Alex Redpath. High curling delivery brought down, though, by Caden Miner. And the follow up is well high and wide. Looks like Craig Robertson uh, snuck up there for that set piece. And, well, that was definitely a defender's clearance. But unfortunately, I think he was trying for the goal. Does look that way. <laughs> but regardless, they will. Reset and reconfigure. And Norgrove will pick his target for this goal kick. Make it ours, three. Make it ours. Headed clear. Back out. Trying to get there with Stacy. Instead, it'll be Nelson with Donaldson. Nelson tries it himself, but that's right at Norgrove. Saw it all the way, not much of a problem there. Might have been praying for that little bit of a gratuitous raw athletic park bounce too. It's not to be on that time, because Young, under pressure here, and you're in. gets it out right. Good raw! Bay's right, West Castle's left, and it's out for a throw for Bay's. Clearance there by Joey Seal on the throw in, and this is West Castle going the other way now. Trizzi manages to spring Tigney. Tigney has two to go against, that's a good return ball, but nobody there to follow it up as target Stacy was out far right. Nobody was left central. As Thomas Robinson will thump it back up. That goes straight to the head of Ravenhill. Tangled up there, the two number 12s, Young and Ravenhill. Young playing a defensive midfielder while trying to shield that back four. Not an easy task. But there's the long ball for Stacy. Waiting for that, though. Mark Ashley sends it back to Flello. Oof. That was not the best goal kick, and West Castle will be able to capitalize on this. Patrizzi looking for Cauley on the left there. Gives it away, though. And this is a chance for Bays to make something of it. Could be a good counter in the offing here. Nelson has come to help out the attack, and that's chipped forward. Both Yeo and I believe also Young there to make sure that gets cleaned up. 
Patrizzi now. Gives it back out to the left. Sio leaves it. Stacy can't get there. Sliding challenge there. Good block. Only minor with the throw. Minor looks for the bank, but keeps the ball in play anyway. Still minor being harassed by Donaldson, and he does manage to spring Stacy, but he won't be able to get past Cooper Berry, who will calmly get there first, bank it off of the attacker. Out for a throw. Not messing around back there. Cooper is not trying to be pretty and, and play the ball to feet back there. He's looking just to move the ball up the field and get it out of the, the danger zone. Goal kick, rather, that did manage to cross on the end line side of the corner flag. Let's see if Lolo can make up for his earlier goal kick, and he does with a plomb. It's met by the head of Young. Robinson heads it down. Patrizzi can't quite get there, and it goes over the top. Cottrell will have to deal with this, and he heads it back to Norgrove. Norgrove rolls it back out to his defender. Cottrell. Tigney. Hard pass. Nice little turn there, though, from Young, as he managed to keep possession under some heavy, heavy shadowing there from Adam Ravenhill. Red path now, looking at his opposite number 15, Patrizzi. Walter, out wide, back to Young, goes up the middle. Yo, Joey Sio, it's going forward to Keenan Colley, can he keep it in? He can keep it in. Great wheels from Keenan Colley. Patrizzi crosses, Stacy over his head. Does well to win it and keeps it in play. Does very well to keep it in play. Great footwork and wins the foul as well. Individual effort. A for individual effort for Simon Stacy. This little touch and turn here under pressure. Who will Don't think Justin liked that too much, getting beat like that, so he uh, made sure he didn't get beat for the second time. Let's put it that way. How dare you get past me? I believe the message would have been there. <laughs> Standing over this, Joshua Walter, 10 for West Castle. Targets charge in. That's where it goes. Flicked on and in. It's 1 0 West Castle. Joshua Walter. That may have gone straight in for Walter. Direct free kick goal. If that is his, then that's his fifth goal of the Jackson Cup. Team leading fifth goal in this cup. And he's 11th across all competitions. And they're celebrating like it's Joshua Walters. So Walter, and that does, it sails past everybody. Flello caught out by that. Nobody seems to get to this. It's just a clean bounce in. What a free kick from Joshua Walter. You know, in swinger, far post, one of the toughest things, toughest balls to to defend. So well done to West Castle for getting on the board first. That'll. That should open things up a bit more here. 36th minute, I believe that was. Walter with a unofficial assist, I would say, to Simon Stacy for that great effort to win the ball in the corner and then get the free kick. West Castle have a lead here as we approach the eight minutes of halftime mark. And no foul given there. Clean nice shoulder, 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 shoulder. Yeah, you looks fine. You bet, you're allowed to do that. Sure. Absolutely. And Bays will take it. Nelson spinning and turning. The ball stays in play. Stacy will give it back. And Young to the goal scorer, Walter. Suddenly, all of Bay's urgency. We close? We close? We thought we saw it before, Vince. They're down 1 0, heading to halftime. It may get wrapped up to a whole nother level. Now, Nelson is about to make life 
perhaps even more difficult for Cottrell and Robinson if that's possible. Yeah, I don't think their game plan was, was going to be to sit back by any means, but this will definitely force them to uh, go forward a bit more and, and try to create a little bit more because now they must score. Norgrove punches clear, collision there, and the follow-up is a very high and heavy effort there from, I believe that was Mark Ashley. As he saw daylight and figured, why the heck not? There's the punch under Norgrove, calm and collected under heavy pressure there to make that punch. That was a good solid challenge there by Norgrove. That's, uh, he's gonna be busy, he'll have a lot more of those. He'll take his time now, settle things down. He sides up 1-0 on a curling free kick from Josh Walter that fooled everybody. Got exactly zero touches on the way through and ended up in the back of the net behind Andrew Flello. Mark Ashley now. Miner puts it forward. Long ball from Patrizzi. And that will be out for a throw for Bays on that long ball. Fortuitous direct deflection there. And Nelson will chase that down. I imagine this will be Milner's or uh, Ashley's throw, I should say. Bit of a stir in the stands right now. It's a uh, very anxious sort of. Weird crowd right now. The high drama and tension for the 1-0 lead for the young side from West Castle. It's West Hills base team. Wow, <laughs> what an outlet from Norgrove. He, <laughs> he just skied that and did it 80 yards. Not a bad delivery, that's yeah. okay. Wow. Though I'm sure if you asked Norgrove, you would have preferred somebody get on the end yeah, of it. Yeah. But on, on, taking on its own merits, excellent outlet. And now West Castle will try again, this time playing out from the back for Thomas Robinson. Cottrell's ball up the side. Ends up going off a leg and out of CO. Bays with the throw and flicked on by Ravenhill. Lost in the end. Wibley is there to try and win it back. CEO has other plans. Goes up the line. Collie will try and help out. And Patrizzi now. Deflects off and out. Sliding leg there from Craig Robertson. West Castle throw. Under five minutes to go in this first half. West Castle one, Bays United nil. Should we see O here thinking about what he wants to do with this throw in. Ops to go over a few heads, trying to pick out Tigney. Ultimately a little bit too much jostling. Called for the foul. Back the other way come Bays. They go forward. They'd want one before the half's out just to get back on even terms. Barry and Tigney's chasing down Barry, as was Stacy. He had to get that right. Ultimately, just thumps it into touch. Two tricky attackers bearing down on him. Cooper Barry does the most sensible thing possible and get it out of town. Yeah, he didn't want to mess around with those guys barreling on top of him. I probably would have done the same thing. Throwing again, looking for Tigney. Falls. Ashley. Sees that go out off a deflection. Another West Castle throw as West Castle keeps marching downfield. His timeline's down low to take it. And if they can get another, why not? Hey, he steps, he steps, he steps. Wib, pass him, pass him. Wib, do you take him now? It was short, wait, wait, wait. under pressure. Walter tries to get it back in. So Young behind him, opts to go forward. That's where Stacy is. Stacy. Little 
ball who's looking for Patrizzi. Svendin, there's a hard, hard challenge there from the goal scorer, Walter. And he may get a talking to here from uh, referee Sean McLaren. And that's it. That's it. your one and only warning, she says. No more of that. Yeah, that's a... That's, that's a good a whack. It's that's a, a solid whack. stiff challenge there. <laughs> yeah. Referee's uh, stern warning there is duly warranted. And now West Castle charging the other way. Stacy running up the right. That's where the ball goes, but it's intercepted by Ashley. Foul call, though, against Sean Young, who's been uh, seen his fair share of tackles as well. That'll be another light talking to here to the Bay's midfield. Yeah, I think that was a little message for Red Pass saying, hey, there, you got your one freebie now. Next one, uh, you'll be into the book, I'm sure. Walter will think about what he wants to do here. 90 seconds left in regulation. Stoppage time to come. Can't imagine there'll be much of it. Flello. This outlet goes long. That's where Donaldson and Nelson are. Goes short to Redpath. Ashley over the top from Mark Ashley. Falls, Donaldson on the chase. Does get there. But a recovery there is nice from Cottrell. Or minor, I should say. Donaldson to the middle. Ooh. Nothing but West Castle jerseys from that centering effort from Donaldson. That was a dangerous ball. If only there were a green jersey. Now Tigney on the counter here. Can he get past that? Ryan Ashley. No, Ashley holds firm. Wow, that was a nice little battle there. And Ryan Ashley winning that one. He had to get that one right. Tigney was off to the races if he was given an inch there. Ryan Ashley, the two Ashley brothers on defense, holding firm as best they can. And on the deck again is Walter. The Raven with a little foul there? Oh. Yeah, just a little bit of a Are you not allowed to the do back. that? I don't think you're quite, I think huh. they changed that rule last year. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> but Before that, you know, barging somebody and tackling from the back, totally legal. You saw it all the time. Some of the best in the game did that. Cottrell will control that. And we've just about played the full 45 of the first half now, so it's on the referee's discretion how much further we go in this half. West Castle up 1-0. Nice little turn and clip there from Nelson. Robinson will get rid of it, keeping it in play as Stacy. The referee decides she's seen enough. 45 minutes in the book, West Castle United. 1-0 up over Bayes United. Vince, your thoughts on the first half? I must say it was an interesting half. Uh, West Castle didn't come forward as much as I thought they would. Bayes defended well, so obviously the one goal on the on the free kick. It, uh, the second half is going to get interesting. You have to think Bayes United look the more th they look the more threatening side. Nelson and Donaldson have shown that they have that, and. Uh, it's gonna be a it's gonna be quite the order for Thomas Robinson and Mark Control to hold them in check. Can they do it? Second half of the 2019 Jackson Cup final is coming up after this. Today I'm in Courtney with the Tap family. They're dog lovers and power smart all-stars. One of the first things we did was change the insulation in our crawl space. We used to have freezing feet in the morning, so we upgraded to this more efficient insulation. I see the makings of a future man cave. This is it, yeah. yeah. We put shades on our skylights to keep the heat out in the summertime. Your Power Smart All Stars, let's look the part. Power Smart oh. All Star <laughs> Cardigans. The Taps did it, and you can too. Boost your Power Smarts at powersmart.ca. That investment opportunity your neighbor told you about actually a fraud? What about the hot tip you got from your uncle? Or the sure thing from your colleague at work? I'm Brian Coxford. Investment fraud can be passed on by a lot of different people. So if you're approached by somebody about an investment, even if it's someone you know and trust, make sure you check it out first. Don't be part of a fraud. Learn the warning signs so everyone can stay safe. What do you got to lose? Maybe everything.
I think of Todd and Nicole, um, first of all, I always like think of Halloween because I feel like they own Halloween. They always have like the best costumes. It's always a surprise what they come out with. We actually met um, on Halloween. She wandered into my karaoke bar. She was a, a like a movie quality zombie. My friend who does movie magic um, makeup. So she actually made a hole in my neck with latex that I had a vial of blood so that if someone was going to turn to talk to me, I could spit out blood. She slid, kind of like lurched into the bar, totally in character, didn't say one word. Um, I was dressed as Ace Ventura with a full uh, ballerina costume on. So he was wearing a pink tutu, running around the bar, jumping up and down. <laughs> Todd had wanted to take a picture of me and he tapped me on my shoulder. When I turned around, I just spat blood out at him. But let me take a picture of her. But I didn't actually say anything to him and then I just walked away. We didn't really talk the first time, but he was obviously intrigued. Me and Nicole have always tried to incorporate movies, recreations into our, into our relationship story. It just kind of happened that way. We started with uh, my 40th birthday was the first big celebration. Todd's birthday falls in September, so he was doing this. Shots of the Big Lebowski in, uh, to recreate the movie. Our photo shoots were basically a merge between cosplay and just for events. He found friends that looked similar to the characters and then designed all their costumes. It was a lot of fun, and ever since then, we just kind of continued that trend. They do like to be different, um, not so much as for mainstream or what you know everybody else is doing. They like you know to stand out a little bit and just have that something special that's sort of just them. Ooh. Continued with my proposal to Nicole at Universal Studios on Back to the Future Day. I've just informed uh, the group here that we're going to go down and do a little private tour, some cars from Back to the Future. What do you guys think of that? <laughs> we recreated the Western Union delivery scene from the movie. Mr. Cameron! Yeah. Is your name Todd Cameron? Uh-huh. We've had this in the office, in the guest services office, for the last 41 years. We were given explicit instructions to deliver it here at this very moment, this day, to a fellow looking just like you today, October 21st, 2015. Oh, oh my. And she had no idea. I had a little DeLorean ring box. We had some friends that were helping with the skit, and uh, Universal Studios helped us out. It's a DeLorean. Oh, my God. Are you serious, man? You gave me such a beautiful past and present, and I would like you to continue that in the future. Can you be my wife? Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes! <laughs> it was actually Nicole's idea to continue that with the Enchantment Under the Sea dance for our wedding. When I see you, the burn so sing. My heart shines like a diamond ring. Everyone knows you're my everything. Oh, I'm so in love with you. It took a year to plan. Um, both Todd and I, if we're doing crafts or costumes, we do everything to a T, so there was hours, countless hours spent on pausing the Back to the Future movies to make sure everything was exactly the same or if we could like recreate something, a plate being or a punch bowl. King Neptune statue, we got the blue suits for the band. I had actually as a gift wanted to get Todd the DeLorean that we ordered from Vancouver. That was like our prop. Our wedding was huge success. Pictures turned out awesome. Wow! The third one, to finish off the trilogy, we used, uh, we got the help of Christopher Lloyd, Leah Thompson, and Tom Wilson from Back to the Future to help us with uh, announcing our, our upcoming baby. It was just very fate-like that we went to Calgary, went to the Fan Expo. It was amazing, and they held up all of our signs and little baby booties that I had made. Everything kind of always leads up to something for us, and it's always bigger than what we expect it to be. Nicole had mentioned previously that she wasn't really into doing the traditional maternity shoot. She was more interested in just getting the baby shots done. Todd asked me, so what do you think about doing kind of like a spoof maternity? I said, yeah, no problem, I'd be down for that. I happened to come across a one-to-one -one scale model of a chest burster at a garage sale this summer. I do a lot of garage sailing. This 
was the guy I came across that became the inspiration for our photo shoot. He brought it home and he was like, what if we did like a recreation of the Alien movie? And I was like, okay, whatever, you know, it's totally fine. Well, I got the message from Todd regarding the maternity shoot, which um, I've done like several maternity <laughs> shoots before. Um, and then he slowly told me about his idea and concept for it. I wanted to tell a story. I wanted to make people laugh, but I wanted to do it in, in Halloween style. So we had to incorporate some horror into it. We kind of started, I guess, Todd's idea for the story as, you know, like the loving husband and wife, baby belly. I actually really like the cheesy, horrible one that he's kissing my belly in the rain because it's so not us. Pumpkin patch, picturesque, very like pretty scenery, you know, I'm kind of tying into that autumn and Halloween theme. As we go through his shot list, we get to the more gruesome and gore. I was freezing and I was in bare feet and the mud was like going up into this dress and the blood and being splattered on. Oh, and the rain's coming too, so it might get streamy. That's okay. It's so beautiful. Thank you. Oh, I thought you meant... <laughs> and the little baby alien. I wasn't really phased by it because I'm like, okay, this is just Todd. This is a, uh, this is just normal. This is just something that we're gonna go out and do. It's just one of his ideas. He like wrote a script in his head. He knew what angles and shots to do. I was just kind of the prop, right? So <laughs> I just go along with what he said. So we've been saving the pictures until after our Thanksgiving was over. I actually went to bed at six o'clock that night. I remember him saying, okay, I'm gonna post them. I said, okay, cool, we'll, we'll share them. 60% of people will just scroll by maternity shoot, especially guys, they, they won't care. But if there's the promise of something exciting happening, they, they might check it out. So I kind of alluded to that and then plunk the pictures on Facebook and the almost immediate response was something that I could never have imagined in my wildest dreams. When I went to sleep that night, um, it, my particular Facebook status had been shared I think 5,000 times. When I woke up in the morning, it had been 50,000 times. Immediately, I had like a sheer sense of panic. Like, what do you mean it's gone viral? I thought this is just kind of a spoof for our friends. The next thing we knew, like it had just blown right up. Like there, I heard there were people like in Shanghai, people in Egypt, Korea. It was just like all around the world. Going viral is a really bizarre way to spend the last couple weeks before your child comes. Now to a maternity shoot that is truly out of this world. Canadian couple Todd and Nicole Cameron wanted to announce their pregnancy in a unique way. And since they both love Halloween, they came up with this. Everyone from People Magazine to Board Panda to Nerdist and Aussie Men Reviews uh, covering our story. This is just bloody awesome. How Grouse is it that one day the little chest burster will grow up into a kid who can look at these photos and go You guys were cool once What happened? Pretty much seemed like everyone and their dog wanted to put their spin on on our story It's just really bizarre to see your your name in different or your picture was surrounded in different languages and to know that it had gone absolutely around the world and back by the end of the whole viral cycle, my Facebook posts have been shared 321,000 times. And that's not views, that's shares. So if you think of all the people that viewed it, that didn't share it, it was probably viewed millions and millions of times. It's almost surreal to be known as the alien maternity couple, especially around town. Counselor to delivery room, please. Uh, Dr. Counselor uh, to delivery. From the sound of that, it must be close to baby time. Dodd and Nicole, is it? Hey, I saw you two on the, the, the dirtest. I'm the alien baby couple in the pumpkin patch. It's like... Yeah, that's us. I have got this medical YouTube channel. You have got to see. I'm sure it's great, Doctor, but this is kind of a bad time. Oh, of course. <laughs> The baby! First, just a quick selfie. Uh, Nicole, could you look at the camera and smile more? Doctor, the baby! Ah! Jack came two weeks after the story broke. We were quite happy to see that, uh, that Jack was human. Thankful and lucky and grateful that he came out perfect, healthy, 100%, you know, the 10. 10 fingers, 10 toes, and no tail. <laughs> the overall message is with your kids, you know, no matter how they come out, no matter how they turn out, 
You just gotta love them. Hey, buddy. Jackson Cup final. Highlights here from the first half between West Castle and Bayes United. Here's the goal. Goes straight through everybody. Joshua Walter with the free kick that fools everyone and has his side up 1-0 after 45 minutes. He loves it. West Castle faithful are loving it. Is there more? Let's find out as the second half gets underway in just a moment here. So we have a couple of substitutions going on here at the halftime break. We'll get you those in just a moment. Players are getting all limbered up here. Bays United looking to try and find that equalizer. West Castle looking to put this game away. So coming into the game here for West Castle, one of their three outfield player substitutes, Bolin Lakiaka, has come in. He'll be on the left hand side here. Meanwhile, on the other side. I think that's Jack Hill. Yes, Jack Hill has come in for Bays. It looks like in their midfield. Some tactical shuffling done on all sides here as they, both Bays and West Castle, look for the right combination to see them through the next 45 minutes. Sounds like it. Everyone's set and ready to go. Cote and Tigny standing over it. And we're off and away. Long ball from West Castle off the head of Ian Wibley. And out for an early West Castle throw. This will be Keenan Cauley to throw in. Tigney spins and does well to get away, not once but twice. He's got some space into the middle, but no one can finish it. But look out, it's a base counter on now. Nelson is there. Stops, waits for support. Shouldering him there is the substitute, Lekeka. Colley gives it back. Cottrell. To Robinson, still holding that back line together. He's got Walter and Young in front of him. Opts not to, keeps it. Now goes out to the right. This is Young. Goes to Minor, now forward. This is Petrizzi. Petrizzi gives it back. On the run here, he has two targets in the center. And the cross goes in, shouts for handball. No, says the referee right away. Waves that off immediately. Not interested, and out it goes. Looks like Simon Stacy was the one brought off at halftime there to allow uh, the Keka to come in. So a substitution up top there. So here we see the cross. Uh, I mean, his hand is bent, but it's at, the, at his side as well. I don't know if you can give that as a handball. That's got to be ball to hand. I'd have to agree with you, Arturo. Nothing there. Play on. Score a goal. Earn it. Now they're looking to do just that. It's the throw in now from the right. Nice burst of speed there from Tigney. Gives it away, though. And Wibley sees the run. That's a great ball to catch the run of Hill, Jack Hill. Tight, tight, tight. No Subbed in for this second half. Crosses, nothing but blue. Tigney takes a touch, gets around nicely. Around Ashley, he's got a little bit of space. And Tigney centers. Oh, you can see the idea there, tries to win it back, but then gives away the foul as he goes in a, a little bit too hard there on Cooper Berry who stays down. Oh, that's a, that might be a lethal combination of speed there as Gote Tigni and Bolin Lakeka nearly connect. And Barry gets cleaned out for his trouble. And there's one rookie this time to Tigni getting the upper hand on Ashley as he scoots by him. Ryan does recover well to get back and 
Cooper ends up taking a little bit of a whack for his efforts. Long ball there, met by Trell. And cleared again, only as far as Hill. Whitley wins a free kick there. Scrambly play. Ultimately, costs West Castles. They concede the free kick, and now what can Bayes do from this spot? Red Path is standing on it. Yes, there's now plenty of options here. Great positioning for it, just angled off the front of goal. Off the center, I should say. And Red Path and Nelson both standing over it. They've got options. What do they like here? Three in the wall for West Castle. And it will be Red Path. As Nelson peels off Red Path. Straight through, Ooh. right at Norgrove. And quickly rolled out. He sees him take me one on two, but the throw is right to Barry, who steps in front of that smartly. And Bays keep the pressure on. Cottrell, nice little bump there, and cleared. And that's a, asking a little too much there of the Keika. Patrizzi, nice little push and spin there. Tigney can't hold possession. Barry thumps it long. Checking their run there with the Bays players. They were all offside. So the line had moved up smartly there from Westcastle. Norgrove will just kill a few seconds here in the back of his area. Wait for Nelson to make the obligatory run over. And then sprint right back to the other end. Time management already happening five minutes into this second half. Westcastle up by a goal. Barry, back up field. Can't find Nelson, though not for lack of trying. In the second effort, will find a sprinting Donaldson. Donaldson cuts back. Can he find his left foot? No. Hard tackle there. Referee had a long look at it, decides nothing in it. That's Donaldson looking dangerous again. And this time, it's Nelson trying to make something happen. He's fouled by Patrizzi. And another free kick for Bays. Now here comes that offensive pressure that we were expecting to see to start this second half. And just a little too much gusto there from Patrizzi. No need to get that, uh, that much leg into it. Sh Shaw and McLaren here will pace off the wall. It's just like the two people in the wall. Walter and Lukeaka trying that unfortunate duty. Antigny remains the lone man at midfield. Nelson runs over it, red pack. Looking back post, oh, the ambitious attempt there. The ambitious overhead kick attempt from Donaldson. Uh, looks good, uh, except for the part where it doesn't connect. Going for the highlight reel there was Justin Donaldson. Yeah, I didn't think he had much there. A little bit overhit there, but uh, it was a very similar spot where Walter got his goal, so. A little bit outside. Could have been a tough angle even to hit the target from there, so doubly high degree of difficulty to make anything off of that set piece, but regardless, Red Path looks forward, finds Wibley, cuts it inside, Hill leaves it, and the clearance bounces right off of Wibley. And Lakega will send that out for, or deflect that off of his opponent there for a throw for West Castle. Hill is being played more as a, an advanced midfielder, I would say, here. Advanced, there's a turnover there. Oh, nice little nutmeg as he tries to play in the Patrizzi. Now Patrizzi does it. Tigney waits for help. Patrizzi, nice leg left in there. That was a clutch defensive move there by Ryan Ashley. Well, so we've got two West Castle attackers bearing down on goal. Bit of a high boot there from Hill. A little bit of descent though, doesn't matter. Away they go. Keenan Colley. Tigney shows short to pick it up. Back to Colley. Bounces it off. Little shove there of frustration from Ian Wibley. Hold up, Bull, and hold it. Second! 
over the head of Digney there. And away goes Wibley. Fortunately, that goes right off the heel of Patrizzi. Or Stacy, perhaps. No, there's Patrizzi. Dribbling through, he's got an empty net, and it's in! 2-0 Westcastle, and they're jumping for joy at Royal Athletic. Gote and Tigny, the rookie has Westcastle up by two. Terrible turnover at Mill the Park. Just cannot do that in that spot, and uh, Westcastle is punished days on that one. Patrizzi did well to scramble his way through there. Looks like Barry may have been the one guilty of not getting the clearance right the first or second time there at least. But ultimately, Patrizzi does enough to get it through, but meanwhile, back at live play, Nelson tried to round the keeper, and Orno's way out of his net, and he's got it in! Well, that was fast. Norgrove goes on an adventure and is punished for it by Patrick Nelson. You cannot let a man who's got 18 goals to his name this season have a free look at goal. And Norgrove will, after having a very solid first half, looks make some questionable decisions here to go on an adventure. Well, and I hate to say this, but I was just about to say that Bays is in a lot of trouble here, but uh, that was the best medicine they could have asked for is getting that goal from Patty Nelson. It's a game again, and uh, I, I think uh, the mood is going to change here pretty quick. 2-1. It's still West Castle by a goal. As quick strikes from Gote and Tigny in the 54th minute, followed immediately by Patrick Nelson in the 55th. 2-1. That'll be a throw for West Castles, and Tigney goes over a little bit hard there. I think Mr. Ashley might have got away with a little bit of a whack on that one. Oh, just a little bit. Just a little bit of a touch there. What's well, a little foul amongst friends? Of course, that's at a little touch from any of the Ashleys is going to be a, a massive one from anybody else, so. Tigny. Collie tries to get up, can't. Hill, can he clear? He can. Only as far as the first goal scorer, Walter. It's loose. And Flello will claim that. Patrizzi, doing his best to stay on top of this in a defensive effort, but Bayes just overpowering. Nelson up against Walter. Walter's still with it. Nelson's shaken off. And ultimately concedes the foul, does Nelson, as Redpath and Nelson find it tough to contain the young Walter. Yeah, nice little battle there, you know. Patty did end up fouling him, but uh, you know what? Good little battle. Walters wins this one. This castle not showing any signs of bending here. After that brief foray into the unknown by Simon Norgrove. Meanwhile, Kayaka doing some nice fancy footwork here on the near side. Wants to get that cross and he does. It's gonna be over everybody's head. But Young did try to get a boot to Patrizzi. And down goes Flello just to make sure. Might have been going wide off the deflection, but Andrew Flello taking no chances. Boots that down the left. He's looking there for the run. Donaldson. Ultimately, it will come all the way back. Cooper Barry will have to restart this. Hill. He's moved inside. Young. It'll be a throw for West Castle. Gorgeous day at the park, Rotoro. Absolutely. Oh. The grass looks good. It's been a uh, Decent bit of balance, but it hasn't been unplayable by either side. They've shown that they've adapted this quite nicely. Perfect temperature, tiny bit of breeze. See the flags rippling on the far side there. You can also see a lovely cross being put in by Westcastle. Cleared with authority by Ravenhill. 
And a decent Ashley, turnout, say. too, which is nice. Yeah, just Attendance below us here. Attendance at the door was 1,178. Good dose of happy fans here. Makes any soccer game better. And drawing a foul there on the far side, I believe that was Antigny. He tried to get around his man. He's won a free kick in a decent location on the park. So it is Antigny there going up against Barry. Barry might actually feel a little bit hard done by. He had positioning and turned the shoulder. Antigny though. Caught unfairly, says the referee. And now it's Donaldson as a one-man wall. As he watches the Walter from the same spot where he scored last time. Float in another one. Mm. Punched away by Flello, headed back into the area. And this one will be cleared by Bays and caught by Flello. It was Young with the second header there, following up Sio. Flello equal to the task. Miner chases that down. Or Collie, excuse me, chases that down. Tigney. Still with it, gets past Redpath. Still haranguing. So Tigney and Young inside to Walter. Nothing but green in front of him, lays it off for Tigney. Young. Fancy footwork from Antigny again. Makeka crosses high and a little too, too high there. I think you're getting the idea of what I talk about with Antigny there. You know, he gets that ball, he's pretty explosive, he's got great creativity. It's a pleasure to watch. I'm sure he won't be sticking around uh, on the island much longer, and he'll be getting shipped away and, uh, and most likely furthering his soccer abroad. Hard to disagree with that based on the performance he's put on today. Entertaining the crowd here at Royal Athletic. And Wibley. 50-50 ball there. Stern challenge from Ryan Ashley. Fends off the on-rushing Lakeaka. Walter now watches this come down. Jumps with Redpath. Redpath comes out better of it. Thumped forward by Ryan, Mark Ashley, excuse me. And Norgrove will claim this easily. Walter under pressure there from Wibley. The battle goes the way of Wibley that time. And Walter is a uh, showing the first yellow of the afternoon. He was warned. That warning had come in the first half, and Walter, a little bit cynical there. Carly Sean McLaren decides she's seen enough and into the book. Can you get it? Goes Walter. It's been a quiet day that way. Well, I think that's the first booking, isn't it? Uh, I think we had a completely clean uh, Tony Grover Cup earlier this afternoon, and yes, that would be the first discipline of any note, really. Meanwhile, on the run here, Tigney Ooh. brought down. That surely might warrant some extra discipline. And going to her pocket again, another yellow. In quick succession, a pair of yellows come out. T Tigney there with the, the speed to get past, and Ravenhill, I mean, there was really not a heck of a lot he could do there. Probably a good spot for a foul, to be honest. Looked like uh, Tigney was through, and well, he definitely, uh, Took away a bit of a scoring opportunity there, so eh, not a bad place to take a yellow. Mm -hmm. Standing over this is a charmed side of the pitch here if you're West Castle. This looks familiar. Little too much mustard on that one, though. High over the bar. You could see exactly where he was looking to put that, same as last time. Hit this one with pace, though, as opposed to last time with a bend and, uh, and getting West Castle the first goal. 
Wibley. Loses out and Young now. To the middle, Tigney. Turns twice. Being under double coverage here. Gets the throw in the end though. As the foot from Ryan Ashley sees that out. Keika, Cauley on this left side. Patrizzi, back to Young and back to Patrizzi. Goes for a sprint. Tigney plays the pick there, but no call. Crossed, Stacy is there. It's still in play though. Good effort there from Simon Stacy. Can't keep possession though, and Bays go the other way. Nelson trying to get past Robinson. Nothing doing, and back the other way is Westcastle. Young, Patrizzi, has a red path looking at him, goes past him. Cauley, cuts back inside, and again, goes low, finds Tigney, who's into the area, cuts it back again! Through everybody! It just needed a touch, and no one there for Tigney's hard work. And slice down there is Miner. Good tackle. Had to get all ball and did there. Sterling work. That was Donaldson actually coming back and helping out his defense. But it's still West Castle on the attack. Tigney. Again, he's been serving up just some juicy six yard box crosses. Nobody there to tap them in. And now it's Collie's turn. Over the head of Stacy in the end, and now Donaldson will try and clear this. Stacy comes in with a hard collision on Donaldson. That will be a foul against Stacy. Yeah, I suppose you should be playing the ball instead of uh, just trying to take out your man on the shoulder. So good call by the referee there. Sean McLaren's had a decent day. Off, off Stacy and out. Still be a Bayes throw. Bayes do have a, quite a few decent options available off their bench, whereas West Castle, only two outfield players remaining. Kenneth Elegon and Jonathan Walter. They do have, worst case scenario, Sashdi Grewal, who's available to play in goal for Norgrove. So far, no sign of that. Meanwhile, in fact, this will go back for Bayes. All the way back for the throw. Over the head of Hill, but now he's got it. Loses up to Young. Hard work inside there by Mark Ashley. Chipped forward. Donaldson is looking for it. He's chested it down. Donaldson cuts inside. Blocked. Looks up and waits for the clearance, and Tigney. And here's a little bit of space here, a little bit, but it's tucked, stuck in his feet. Oh. And hauled down is Gote and Tigney. It's a fairly, uh, I would say, cynical challenge there by Robert Eng. You know what, if Rugby Canada is watching this game right now, they appreciate <laughs> that tackle. It's certainly clinical for one discipline of sport, just not this one. As Robert Eng goes into the book, in the 68th minute. It's two Bays United players booked versus the one for West Castle. Young floats this for the corner, headed in and away. And won't be able to keep that in. But he'll get the throw. Good interception there. And clipped and brought down. No call though. Fair challenge, says the referees. Ryan Ashley not able to go anywhere with that. 
Now Wibley can't quite hound his man, and suddenly with some space is Patrizzi. Patrizzi chips forward, looking for the run of Stacy. Stacy now quite deep here, needs some support. Does Ooh. manage to do some tricky little work there, but not quite tricky enough. And Mark Ashley will happily thump that back downfield. Nelson puts it ahead of himself. It's a little too far, though. He did have targets streaming into the box in the form of Wibley and Donaldson. That is put out to touch. Mark Ashley now. Tall, right away, away. Away. John! Yes, yes, yes. Hill. It's one touch, but can't do enough, and that's sent out calmly to midfield. And Tigney. Stern challenge there by Cooper Berry, making sure Tigney can't go anywhere with it. Eng will go up his right side. Donaldson puts it in the air. Wibley with the head, does control it, tries a shot, is blocked. This will go all the way back to Ryan Ashley. Puts it in. In an offside position there was Wibley, checked his run. Now will go all the way out for a goal kick. Seventieth minute now. West Castle United, two. Bays United, one. This scoreline holds, it would be West Castle United's first ever Jackson Cup. And they have certainly shown they can play with the established squads in the first division like Bays. Flello just gets rid of that, no nonsense. It will be a throw for West Castle, but with Antigny bearing down on him, I don't blame him for just trying to get it the heck away from Gauthier and Tigny as fast as possible. Cottrell. Out wide to Minor. Goes up the right. Nice little spin move there. He's tried to get on his horse there, but well defended by Mark Ashley. That'll be out for you know, eventually. No, it's still in play. Did it cross over the line? It's I think point. it bent yeah. out. Yeah, it's come back into play. The talent. It's so amazing. Even fool, fool the trajectory of the ball. <laughs> Speaking of being able to fool you. Roland Makayaka tried some trick trickery, but was brought down by two Bay's defenders. He's back up again. Pops that up. Wait, that was Adam Ravenhill. Now here's Antigny, up against Eng. Just runs right at him, step over once, twice, cuts in. Well defended in the end by Aang, but only as far as Young. Doesn't like what he sees, goes back to Cauley. Cauley puts it low. And that's cleared by Redpath with no nonsense. Nelson puts his head down and runs. Won't be able to keep that in, though. But Bays look a little bit on the back foot here, Vince. Yeah, you know what? They better do something in a hurry, because uh, with West Castle sniffing, they get another one, it's over. Bays needs to... Uh, to get on the board here, or else uh, at the end of the day, they'll be going back out to Lankford with the Jackson Cup. Tigny loses out there against the double team. Eng waits, does with the throw into Donaldson. Donaldson himself double teamed, but does well to get past the onrushing Walter. Now triple team and a little bit of a clip there. Patrizzi conceding the foul. And Donaldson is left base with a free kick within range to make something happen. Hard tackle there from Patrizzi. No real, no real objections there from the referee, or to the referee's decision, I should say. 
And it'll be three in the wall here as both Cooper Berry and Patrick Nelson standing over this one. Hey, higher line, higher line, higher line. Hey, hey, hey. Boys, Nelson runs over it. Berry goes right for the penalty spot. It falls to a base player, but unable to pull the trigger. There was Ryan Ashley. It will be a base throw. You can see the, it was a fortuitous header there. They tried to clear. That might have been Robinson. Ultimately, they do get a throw in out of it. And that could fall to Ravenhill and Will. Nelson, Eng, the cross, the header! Oh. That close! He's tried the bike, he's tried the diving header. What else does Justin Donaldson have to try here? Caden Miner was in a good position, but still Donaldson able to find contact. We said Bayes needed to try something, and they are certainly doing that. Eng having been moved a little further back for the sub-in of Jack Hill. Does well to feed that cross in. Now Tigney, all kinds of trouble here. The two Ashleys, Ryan and Mark, making sure he goes nowhere. Caden Miner throws in. Stacy does well, puts on the Jets. Can he get the cross in? He can try. Referee's interested in the penalty and a great save by Flello. Danger not over. Shifty moves there. And he will win the corner, will bowl in Makaka. Andrew Flello called into action there, equal to the task. Biggest save of the game right here. Tigney, point blank, is stopped. Flello had to be massive there to keep his side in this. And he did indeed come up big. And now the corner for Westcastle's going short. Tigney gives it right back. Collies is a low and wasteful ball. Collie will want to have done that again. And then they concede the free kick. Wasted effort there from Westcastle. Might be up by one as time is ticking down here. But they still have to be a little more, a little more professional than that with these opportunities. Now Jack Hill will sprint to the right-hand side. Does well to get past Cauley. Puts in a left-footed cross. Clear. No nonsense there. Eng is underneath it. Heads it to the middle. Over the head of Raven Hill. Headed past him. And Tigney leaves it. Touched forward. Out to the wide right goes Stacy. And to end stuff now, Stacy. As Mark Ashley decides to go inside. There's the low ball, flicked by Barry. Ooh. Almost put it in his own net, trying to clear it from danger, and Flello had to be sharp. Those are what nightmares are made of, those nasty own goals that come back to haunt you. So Cooper will definitely be thanking him later. Over the top. Dangerous ball there, head in hands there, as Ian Wibley thought he saw a way through. Meanwhile, down on the pitch is Sean Young. And while they're looking at him, we'll have a look at this. Oh, it's a good thing Flello was going at full stretch. Bay's supporters, hearts and mouths there off that deflection. Yeah, it looks like There's the cross, there's the flick. And there's Flello saving his defender's blushes. Brief water break here for both sides. It's Sean Young stays on the ground for Westcastle. Trainer having a look at him. It's just cramps, maybe? Or is it something a little more serious, perhaps? George Constantino, probably the oldest uh, trainer in the league. He's got Young up and on his feet. And the players will finish their 
unofficial chance to time out and regroup. This is a timeout. Somebody called a timeout. So there's there's Young going down. He just felt something and went to went to ground immediately. Has been worked on though. Whatever it was that he twinged in that step there has since been resolved. And regardless, it looks like no worse for wear. And he'll be ready to enter play again at the referee's discretion as the players take up their positions. Back to Norgrove it goes. Their sporting play and rejoining now is Sean Young. Norgrove thumps long. Barry heads that right back up the middle. And nice little turn there from Jack Hill. Hill, first time ball. Wibley falls for Donaldson, excuse me, Nelson. But Nelson is offside regardless. There's some stern disagreement there from the Bay's attackers. But the assistant referee is unimpressed. So we'll take a look here. Ooh, it's tough from that angle. You can maybe make a case for just a half step forward on Patrick Nelson, but again, difficult call. That's why I'm not an assistant referee. I get that in talent. <laughs> Sean Young shakes off one challenge. Puts it forward to Patrizzi. Patrizzi, does he like his chances? He turns, puts it on his left foot, Ooh. blocked. Walter, forward, Patrizzi, Young. Stacey was showing to the right, crosses instead. He's looking for Antigny, now a bit short there. Walter, he's already on a yellow, he has to be careful. Can't be too rash on those charges. Minor, bends off the on-rushing Bay's attack on the left. Meanwhile, during all of that uh, brief stoppage to look at Young, it looks like Jordan Roy has checked into the game for Bayes United. Maybe made that substitution there, 16 in green. Meanwhile, Eng doing his best to make something happen, but only gets as far as a throw in near the corner flag. So Mark Petrella decided he'd had enough. There indeed is Jordan Roy. Meanwhile, it's Adam Ravenhill. Puts it low and right back out. Throw in for Bays. Hey boys, if the ball goes up, we go up with it. Come on. Hey, come, come. Hey, come, come again. It's Bays' second substitution. Hold on. As Norbro calmly collects that wayward attempt. And meanwhile, another substitution is being set up here. As coming out of the game. Will be Ian Wibley's put in a decent shift. Third base substitution. Meanwhile, a little touch there for Donaldson trying to spring in Nelson. Well dealt with by Cottrell. Eng keeps control. Donaldson skips past, but not enough. And Tigney waits for help and then decides to run it out. Skips one challenge. Gets the return ball. Goes to the top of the area. Still in Tigny. Winding up there. Petrizzi has space. But he loses it. A hard, hard touch there. Oh, Alex Michael Petrizzi will want that one back. And now it's Patrick Nelson for Bays. Goes low. Trying to find the run of Jack Hill, but he's given that away. That'll be thumped out to touch. Throw in for Bays here. How's that Matteo Ventura that uh, checked in for Bays there? 24 in green. This base looking for that offensive spark. Does Ventura have it? The Kaka goes low. Tigney. Shields from his man, keeps going, crosses. That's over the head of Stacy. Young will pick up the pieces. Stacy. Back to Minor. Up the wing. It's out for a Westcastle throw. Did well to play that off the defender. 
Miner will take his time over this throw. Young off his own player this time. Miner still up. He's going to have a go at this. Runs into the area. Nowhere to go, though. And now the fullback is well and truly out of the play, but mi good midfield work there by Young to intercept. And now Walter opened the scoring with a bending free kick that fooled everyone. Jordan Roy doing very well, though, to match him, but he's lost out in the end. Chance here. Tigney, does he like his odds? He's giving back to Patrizzi. Tries it himself, can't get through two defenders. Now Patrizzi, right-footed, puts it up to the other side. Spinning and slipping. Stacy still with it, though. Stacy! Shannon Stacy! Simon Stacy, excuse me. Simon Stacy thought he'd lost it not once but twice. Fantastic work to keep his feet. Not once but twice. And then Flello beaten on that shot to the far post. 3 1 in the 85th minute. Simon Stacy. Ten goals in league play. That is his third in the Jackson Cup this year, this season. Bays now, they need to manufacture something in five minutes. But West Castle just looks a little bit too much for them right now. And there is Ventura in midfield trying to watch this breakup by Miner, who's just gonna run for it, because why not? But he loses out, a little too over exuberant there was Caden Miner. Walter, though, gives away the free kick. Bays need to strike quickly. They did it last time. Tigney scored and Nelson responded immediately. They need that now more than ever. It falls to Donaldson. Donaldson gets around one, puts in the cross. And that'll go out for a goal kick. Just not quite able to do anything. And another substitution here. It'll be Mark Ashley coming out, it looks like. For Cody Fitzsimmons. So our Ashley content today has been reduced by half. What more does Bays have up their sleeve? Headed down by Fitzsimmons as he gets to work early. That'll pop up for Patrizzi. Ravenhill. There's Fitzsimmons, puts it in the center for Hill. Hill, back, to, and he's cross. Hey. Ventura, Mateo Ventura is trying. You can see their cross at far post. He had Donaldson on the run there, but got that all wrong. And in the 87th minute, Bays are in all kinds of trouble. West Castle three, Bays one. West Castle United three minutes plus stoppages away from their first Jackson Cup. Eng throws in, flicked on. And again, like a trell. And they will th send that out to touch again. Bye, bye, boys. Bye. <laughs> and Justin Donaldson's day looks like he's done here. And, and he certainly tried. He has put everything he could on the line here to try and get a goal here for Bays, has Justin Donaldson. But now it will be James Rhodes stepping in to fill that gap. Donaldson tried the audacious bicycle kick. He tried the slightly less audacious diving header. Shove in the box. Referee waves it off and Norgov has to punch. Frantic action there in the penalty area. Right 
The barge there, that was the shove. Cottrell definitely went shoulder. I mean, it would be a soft penalty, certainly, if it were given. And it was close. Here comes the corner for Bays. It's short and low. Walter will clear. And cleaning up the mess there is Roy. Ooh. Nobody at the far post. All you needed was one green jersey there to tap it in for a frantic finish. Fancy footwork there from Rhodes. Rhodes, still going Rhodes, and that's cleared by Walter. Fire drill defending here for Westcastle, but whatever it takes to get through to the 90 minutes. Rhodes has got that footwork, that's for sure. Throw in comes in now. And Young, if he can sprint here and beat his number 12, Ravenhill, supposing 12. Could have had some space there, but Ravenhill does well to track back. Young's all over him, though. He will concede the free kick. And some extracurriculars there between the two of them. And now uh, a bit of handbags coming out. This referee decided to give any cards. I think it'll just be a talking to. Young uh, definitely had himself tangled up. And then there, there's some contact with the face uh, there. Yeah, that's why Raven Hill's a little, little pissed. He gets a little bit of a handbag to the face. Headed there by Hill. Jack Hill not able to get that on target though. Norgrove does well to sprint out and claim it. We've played the full 90 minutes. It's all injury time now. Two minutes. Two minutes for stoppages, indicated by the fourth official. Two minutes for Bays to find two goals. Long ball, Barry back to his goalkeeper, then Tigney all over him. But Flello doesn't go far with it, and Tigney's gonna get a chance here. And Tigney blocked by Barry. But not completely away, though Lekiak is gonna want that one back as he screws that well left of goal. Flello needs to get this back inside the six yard box so he can take his goal kick, and does. Bodies forward, only two defenders back for Bays. Makes sense, they're chasing two goals. But now it's Intigny, stops, turns. He doesn't need to do anything fancy, just needs to hold possession, that's what he does. Young, out wide to Stacy. Simon Stacy scored the 3-1 goal. Trips over the ball there, does Intigny. And Bays try to break out, but that was a hopeful ball from Matteo Ventura. And it's just sent right back into Bay's territory. Barry. It's got to be route one. Nothing fancy at this point. Just get it towards Simon Norgrove's net. That's going to be over the head of Ventura. Yeah, going through the motions at this point, it's, uh, you know, that final whistle's coming. So it's just a matter of... Uh, Matter of playing it out. Nice job by the West Castle team today to play into the conditions. They have shown admirably three goals to the good. They will be more than pleased with that, especially if it ends with them putting their hands on the Jackson Cup. And they will! West Castle United have won their first Jackson Cup. 3-1 over Bayes United. Party time on the near touchline. Uh, this is when you don't mind a little pitch invasion. Norgrove jogs over to join them. Walter opened it up with a free kick. Tigney made it 2-0. Nelson pulled one back for Bays. And then Stacy with the dagger, the 85th minute strike to beat Flello. Your 2019 Jackson Cup champions are West Castle United. We'll be back to wrap things up. Just a short break. family, they're dog lovers and power smart all-stars. 
One of the first things we did was change the insulation in our crawl space. We used to have freezing feet in the morning, so we upgraded to this more efficient insulation. I see the makings of a future man cave. This is it, yeah. We put shades on our skylights to keep the heat out in the summertime. You're power smart all stars. Let's look the part. Power smart oh. all star <laughs> cardigans. The Taps did it and you can too. Boost your power smarts at powersmart.ca. That investment opportunity your neighbor told you about actually a fraud? What about the hot tip you got from your uncle? Or the sure thing from your colleague at work? I'm Brian Coxford. Investment fraud can be passed on by a lot of different people. So if you're approached by somebody about an investment, even if it's someone you know and trust, make sure you check it out first. Don't be part of a fraud. Learn the warning signs so everyone can stay safe. What do you got to lose? Maybe everything. We are the 4 a.m. wake-up call and the unexpected late night. We are the good news and the tough times. We are there when you need us. We are there when you don't. We are driven by what could be, what should be, and what will. Because we are proof of what's possible. Together, we are built to heal. I love the aha moment, you know, when you teach something and they get it, and it's just so rewarding when they actually understand and get it, to see the smile on their face and the energy and enthusiasm that they have. I really like what I do because I do a lot of leadership things. I like to get them in there and get them exploring and then them sharing back their ideas and they get excited about it. So it's fun to see them come with their excitement, all their stories that they have to share and all the things that I want to share with them. It makes me want to come every day. Mom? Hey, buddy. What are you doing up so late? I had a bad dream. Oh, no. Again? When are you coming back? First thing tomorrow morning. Promise. But why can't you be here now? Stay fit, have fun, and save. Purchase a Saanich Recreation Pass and receive access to four community recreation facilities. It's affordable fun and fitness for everyone. The more you use it, the more you save. From swimming pools and weight rooms to skating and pickleball, choose from more than 31 types of drop-in fitness and sports every week. Whether you're into fitness or just want to unwind and relax, the Saanich Access Pass is the best value in the region. Purchase your Access Pass today. Available online or in person at any of our four Saanich facilities. Today I'm in Courtney with the... Well, the action came fast and furious in the second half, and it ended with West Cast United getting their first ever Jackson Cup. You think the action's coming fast and furious? Ask our camera people. They know. They can prove it. We've got the video evidence to show. But the first goal came in the 36th minute off the boot of Joshua Walter. The free kick fools everyone. Pass every defender and attacker into the far side of Andrew Fellow's net. He's happy. He's wearing the arm, man. He's got his team up 1 0. And then Young Brezzi. Little fancy footwork. Ultimately, Gote and Tigny in the 54th minute in the second half, and it's 2 0 for Westcastle. And you might think, well, they're on their way. And Tigny certainly thought so. Leaping for joy at the corner flag. But wait a minute. It's Bayes United, and Patrick Nelson catches Norgrove going on a bit of an adventure, gets the return ball, and that's that. Ian Wibley helping out there with the assist. Don't know what Norgrove was thinking coming out like that, but immediately after Tiggy's goal in the 54th minute and the 55th, Nelson makes it a 2-1 game. But ultimately, Westcastle, just too much. Simon Stacy. Gets back to his feet, does not lose the ball. Oh, maybe, maybe he wants it once, maybe he wants it twice. Nope. Keeps his feet and hammers a beautiful shot to the far post. 3-1 in the 85th minute. And that's how it ended. Both of West Cast West Cast and his top goal scorers, Stacy with 10 in the league and Walter with four in the cup, ended up adding a goal each to their tally. They showed up. They did what was requested of them, scored the goals that got things going. And take me, as you heard Vince Greco say, just an all-star rookie, proved his bona fides 
adding a goal of his own with no small help from Alec Michael Patrizzi and Patrick Nelson for Bays. He was a thorn in the side of the defense of West Castle all afternoon, but ultimately Robinson and Cottrell, Thomas Robinson, Mark Cottrell holding firm against Patrick Nelson, Justin Donaldson, and the rest of the base attackers. And now they will receive their runner-up medals for Jackson Cup. Flello getting his first, the goalkeeper. Donaldson put in quite the shift, did everything he could, even tried the audacious bicycle kick. Redpath, Alex Redpath, part of that midfield engine. Cooper Berry nearly gifted West Castle an own goal, but Flello bailed him out from that little tip backwards. You can't say about Bays is that they certainly made West Castle work for it. It was never going to be easy. Both of these teams, the top two goal scorers in the league, play West Castle 47 goals scored, best in the league, followed by Bays at 46. And it was nothing short of a deserving 3 1 victory for West Castle. Bays there getting their runner up medals, Nathaniel Bell there. Patrick Nelson receiving his just earlier. Did get a go goal to add to his cup tally. Four in the Jackson Cup to go with his 15 league goals. But ultimately, no silverware at the end of it, aside from the runners up medal. The coaching staff received their medals. Waiting patiently just off to the left are the 2019 Jackson Cup champions, West Castle United. It is their first ever Jackson Cup. Ended up in second in the league this year on 36 points. Bays ended up fifth. And as you can see there, Vince Greco, executive director of the Vancouver Island Soccer League, will do the honors as he guides in the new Jackson Cup champions. Quite the job done here as the captain comes up first, Joshua Walter. Got things going with that lovely free kick and kept them going. Gote and Tigny. My goodness, what more could we say about him that hasn't already been said? Amazing speed, fantastic footwork. Had his hand roll to play. Simon Norgrove, goalkeeper, went on a bit of an adventure to uh, allow the one Bays goal, ruined his own clean sheet there, but was still active when called upon. Bolin Lakeaka came on as a sub in the second half. Formed actually a really good attacking trio with Stacy and Antigny. Bays just had no answer for that three forward assault. Ultimately, that was enough to keep Bays more or less penned down until the very end when Bays just let it, let nothing to chance through, through forward the floodgates that we gotta get a goal. Ultimately they couldn't. And West Castle, 3-1 winners on the day. They will receive their winner's medals. And shortly after that, they will receive the Sir John Jackson Cup. historic trophy in island soccer. First awarded in 1915 to the Saanich Thistles. And now here we are, 104 years later, in 2019, and it will be West Castle United to hoist the cup. Squad getting their moment in the sun, in the shade as it were though. And now here comes the presentation of the trophy.
It looks like Walter will be the one to receive the trophy, the captain. Congratulations from Vince Greco. And the captain, Joshua Walter, to receive that cup. And along with the coach and all the substitutes, they raise it. Joyful scenes at Royal Athletic Park. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the 2019 Jackson Cup. For everyone here at Shaw Spotlight in the Vancouver Island Soccer League, on behalf of Vince Greco, my name is Arturo. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Have a wonderful weekend.